And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for August 8th. The remnants of Isaias and Hagapit continue on their merry way towards the northeast of their respective oceans. Nothing has taken their place just yet, but there are some areas of interest across uh, multiple basins that we're looking at closely over the next few days. So in the Atlantic, it's day 69 of hurricane season. We've got three areas of interest now. What was 94L, pretty much no chance for that one. A 20% in the main development region and a 10% uh, spinning up south of the Cape Verde Islands. Almost like tropical depression 10 nearly there, but that's a very low chance at the moment. 40% however for an East Pacific area of interest that could develop into a tropical cyclone early next week. There are some other areas of interest that could also develop later on. We're not quite ready to mark those just yet, but maybe in tomorrow's update or later. In the Western Pacific, a 60% chance now for an area of interest off the Philippine coast and a 20% on the other side, on the western side, from a disturbance in the South China Sea. Remnants of Hagapit still alive and now well off the map. And in the North Indian Ocean, there is nothing active at this point, but there is an area of interest off the coast of Iran that's about to move inland and shouldn't be troubling the area for much longer. So looking at the satellite imagery then, this is what the Atlantic's looking like so far. You can see a little uh, interesting area of interest down there as well. It's not marked under our um, circles. Um, some thunderstorms blowing up, but what we're expecting is something that will really start to get itself together towards the northeast over the next few days, possibly, 20% only of course, and in the Gulf of Mexico things looking fairly quiet here, apart from the usual thunderstorm activity. The Eastern Pacific then, you've got that 40% chance, which probably stems from that um, area there, well it does, off the coast of Mexico that's just about to enter that circle, um, so that is where it's all coming from. You can see the uh, intertropical convergence zone there really lighting up in the last few hours uh, in the uh, very tropical zones towards the equator nearly. In the Western Pacific then you've got this area of interest which uh, looks like it's trying to compete to get a center at the moment. The uh, northern area with high cloud tops there and the southern area over that 60% and that 20% there quite clearly marked as well on the western coast of the Philippines just off Manila actually. Um, either of these systems, maybe both, could form. In the South Pacific, things look exceedingly quiet here, apart from some thunderstorms blowing up over the Solomon Islands and over Papua New Guinea, and a front moving off the uh, eastern coast of Australia. In the Indian Ocean, you can see that enormous blob of convection that's occurring over the Arabian Sea off the coast of Pakistan, eventually off towards Iran over the next 24 hours. Shouldn't last very long at all. Sea surface temperatures then in the eastern Pacific remain fairly warm where it matters, 29, 30 degrees, maybe more than that off the coast of Mexico, uh, but still uh, lacking temperatures as you go further west. In the Atlantic, really warming up in the Gulf of Mexico, I've been saying it for a while, but almost the whole Gulf now, 30 degrees generally, if you average it out probably is, and you can see just a huge amount of warm waters extending to the northeast of the Bahamas, off the US East Coast, and through the Caribbean and into the main development region. The Indian Ocean, very warm waters where that little area is, and um, on the other side as well in the Bay of Bengal off the Bangladeshi coast also the case 30 degrees plus and in the western Pacific certainly not struggling for sea surface temperatures here either with the uh, 28 degree isotherm now reaching Shikoku in Japan and 30 degree waters very common across the Philippine Sea up towards um, the coast of Japan even and also in the South China Sea and the lower Philippine Sea. Here's the sea surface temperature anomalies, and you'll notice that the subtropics are really much warmer than they should be right now, well above average in the Western Pacific and in the Atlantic, so that will probably make storms last longer if the conditions are right for them, at least on a sea surface temperature point of view. Well, on this day in August 1982, we had six systems active right now, and the one pictured was a uh, recon picture of Typhoon Cecil, which was a 145 mile an hour Category 4 on this day, peaking at this point. Um, an intercept from, from uh, the uh, recon plane showing the inside structure of Cecil there. Fascinating. 
And John was a Category 3 in the Eastern Pacific, Ivor was dying, and we had three depressions on either sides of the Pacific as well, 11E, 12E and 13W. Well, with no new name storms on the cards yet, we're still waiting for Josephine, but don't hurry up Atlantic, we've had enough already I think. In the Eastern Pacific, Elida is next up on the naming list, followed by Fausto, way behind by the way in this basin. The Central Pacific, the next name on list one is Hone. In the West Pack, Jiangmi is next up, followed by Mekala, both of them could form in the next, uh, in the next seven days. And in the North Indian Ocean, Gati is the next name on list one. And in the Southern Hemisphere, things won't uh, really ramp up for a few months yet, but Imogen is the next name in Australia, followed by Joshua. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, it's Alicia, followed by Bongoyo. And in the Southern Hemisphere, in uh, the South Pacific even, it's Yolanda. That's all for now, we'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin on Sunday night. Check out our new look Cyclone Tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash Force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.